Well, uh, my presentation is about stalking the stalker. It's about how I caught and ha uh, handed over a digital stalker to the Dutch police. So that one works? Yeah, that one works. Perfect. All right, first small intro. Um, I'm Misha Rick van Gele. I'm a speaker. I do responsible disclosure. I kind of think that almost all of people know in this room what responsible disclosure is. Is that correct? Or not at all? Can I see some hands? <laughs> Who actually knows what responsible disclosure is? <laughs> okay, you yeah. So better than the most, most of the audiences I talk to. <laughs> All right, uh, well, I'm an ethical help hacker. I helped 500 companies with respo through responsible disclosure with uh, vulnerabilities in their software and hardware. And I also am a forensic researcher right now at the NFIR, my own company. Um, first things first, <laughs> Cyber2 Kitten. If you are really done with the word cyber, you can install this to your groom. <laughs> and then if you read some news articles, you will have some fun. <laughs> because this replaces every, every word, which contains every sentence which contains cyber into kitten. <laughs> um, so as I said, stalking the stalker. Uh, once upon a time, I got a message from a person on Facebook. I'm not a lot on Facebook, <laughs> but uh, she apparently saw me somewhere uh, giving a talk, yes, it was she, um, and she messaged me because she was re receiving both digital and physical threats, and it went as far as it was already busy for like 1.5 years, so it was quite uh, a while. Uh, so I did what any person would do. I met up. <laughs> And I met up at a pancake house in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it was like the other, like was almost to Germany, but hey, free pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was a serious case. Uh, someone was being stalked and they, she, she showed me all the evidence of what was actually happening. And it was like maybe two or three times a day. And the stalker actually went and came to her house as well because he also knew her physical address and he would drop in letters into the mailbox or actually, for example, throwing in a window. <laughs> it went pretty far. So we went and tried to track down the stalker. Uh, we had another anonymous email address. We had photos that the stalker sent through email and we had, um, yeah, we had someone suspected of being stalked because she has been stalked by a person before and it, it kind of looked the same. Um, so we looked into the information and the anonymous email address was not used anywhere else. No Facebook, no Twitter, no, no, no sign up somewhere. It was a VPN address sending the emails and there was no, uh, oh, I see a little spelling error. <laughs> there was no active info on the photos. And also there were a lot of spelling errors in his messages, not only mine. <laughs> uh, so guy was a dead end. Uh, but I got a call a few days later that the account of the victim was hacked through Facebook and it turns out that this was the phishing scenario <laughs> that the stalker created. <laughs> Let that sink in for a moment. <laughs> so he was basically sending an email claiming to be Dutch hospital and saying, hey, you know what? We're Dutch hospital. You can log in with us at Facebook. <laughs> That's uh, an interesting phishing scenario. So um, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> But she actually kind of like, I, I was dealing with a professional, but she kind of fell for it too, which I don't know what, what is worse. Um, so this was how it was looking. <laughs> so here you have like a completely out of alignment notice <laughs> saying, you know what, you can log in here. And he already even pre-filled the email address. And he was just asking for the password. Yes, it was it, it, exactly. It was a uh, free hosting provider, <laughs> and he downloaded this free page because I found the source code afterwards <laughs> from hackforums.net, <laughs> and he took it down two days later. So it was kind of another dead end because it was a free account. We couldn't track down the email address because it wasn't registered to anything, and wasn't registered to the uh, email address he used for the phishing. So we changed all the passwords uh, and we actually enabled all the two-factor authentication so this wouldn't happen again. Um, and I told the victim, hey, maybe you shouldn't do it anymore. And check what you're actually receiving before you fill in your info. 
Uh, we proceeded with more info because we actually knew that he was not only capable of stalking and sending messages, but also was technically capable of setting up uh, a website and pretending to be a phishing, uh, pretending to be Facebook. And he was also an expert in bad phishing scenarios. Um, and then suddenly it went quiet. The stalking stopped. So we were like, "What's happening here? Why? Why is he suddenly?" Stopping this and why is suddenly at like the email addresses that he used and the, the fake profiles. Why is that suddenly all offline? So yeah, quite the chat become it has <laughs> um, That was like problem solved is this is he gone now is he did he stop or anything? so two minutes later he came back <laughs> And we received a whatsapp message so it wasn't an email, but it was an actual whatsapp message and it was an envelope delivered to her room to her uh, house as well again um, but now we had a number, a phone number, that was actually a subscription. Um, and he was not, he was hiding his full profile picture, but he was using his own number. So we sent an URL through WhatsApp, which looked like a Facebook post, but actually when you clicked on it, it just reset, you know, error. But with that, he clicked on that 20 times with his home IP address and his mobile network IP. <laughs> But it was showing a fake error, of course. Next to that, I was like, yes, it's right, it says right here, you're an idiot. <laughs> but we also tried to call him anonymously through a VoIP provider. And Vodafone was telling us that it was their voicemail system. So, okay, we know it's Vodafone now. And he was stating his whole full name in the voicemail. <laughs> so we were like, we want more. We want more info. So the victim had a website, and this website, um, she was selling uh, goods and selling health products, and she had a contact form, and she had a separate email address to receive all those imp uh, like emails from the, the company. And we also had full access to all log files. Well, it turns out that I asked, I asked the victim if there was an email from the stalker also through that email address, and it was. The victim stated that there was an email sent through the contact form. The nice thing is, he used his work IP address for that. And they are a big company having their own IP space and every building had their own IP address range with the address in the registry. So we used LinkedIn because we already suspected someone of doing this. And he was stating that he was working at the same company, the guy that stalked her before. Which he was convicted of, by the way. He was convicted one and a half year earlier of stalking the same person. And we also found his manager's name. So, a real, full recap. We got this full name, we got the employer, the manager, we got his real home, work and mobile IP address. We got uh, his phone number and we got all the messages and the evidence. So we called the manager. And pretty interesting, this manager knew about the stalking. And he thought it was stopped around two and a half years ago. So he said, okay, if this still continues, I will talk to him the same day and he will keep us updated with the situation. So <laughs> two days later, <laughs> the manager calls. He tells us that the stalker admitted that he started one and a half years ago, that his contract was not being renewed because he was almost like getting uh, on the verge of getting a new contract. And he stated that he was stalking again because he had a weapons license. And because he was convicted of stalking, he couldn't renew that one, so he started stalking again. That was the logic. Yeah. And the manager was like, are you serious about this? And he was like, yes, I can't renew my weapon license. That's why I hate her again. Okay. This was the logic, actually. And they also gave an insight, like how these people work. <laughs> like, what is up in your mind with that? So I was like, what? Is this seriously? And I told this to the victim sale, and she was like, what is happening here? How is, he, how is that the reason he started stalking? I thought I did something, maybe, that maybe triggered him again into doing it. But apparently it was just he couldn't get his weapon anymore or something. <laughs> so that goes off to the police. And his manager actually was a, wit was a witness and actually justified against him. <laughs> 
So uh, that was very interesting because what happened afterwards is I was also uh, asked by uh, the court and by the police, okay, what did you do? And I was like, yeah, I, I stayed within legal boundaries. I called his voicemail and I, I, find of his, I kind of found his name because he spoke it in himself. Um, so we stated everything, we put it into a report and we sent it off. And there the story ends. He was required to go to court, he got a sentence. And it was not a suspended sentence, it was, I think, 400 hours of, uh, of, of uh, how do you call that, community, community service. services indeed. And it finally stopped. And to this day, he has not, like, uh, stalked anyone anymore, or at least not the person, the victim that I know. And right now, I think that, uh, yeah, from what I saw, he did not get a job or anything up until now, because he was very... Uh, professional about his LinkedIn, he put on everything there, and that was cut off immediately. He he stopped it and he, he got fired. So that's how kind of the story ends here. Are there any questions about this story? Yes. There's a box coming. <laughs> so he, he since he'd been convicted before, yeah. she would have recognized his name immediately when you when you found out yes, who it was, right? Definitely. So at that point you had all the other information about him because of where he had previously worked in his he, previous conviction. He was uh, uh, we only had his name. We had nothing else. We didn't have any phone numbers. We uh, he, he, in the past talking he used anonymous email addresses before as well. And the only reason that he, she knew his name was because of the conviction, of course. So so before they didn't have a history that led to his previous stalking of her. Um, they had a history, but they couldn't really justify in all the ways why he, uh, how, he how they found him. They found him because he idiotically, literally, uh, 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 when they called him, he used his own name. But the thing was, he changed all his information afterwards. Okay. So the old numbers weren't working anymore. I see. But he was still at the same job and... He, was, he actually left the other job because he got fired there too. And someone else hired him. <laughs> Oh, so someone else hired him, but knew about his previous stock. Yes, and and he, and, he and the manager in that case uh, was also someone within the IT security community, which okay. kind of was an issue. And he was at the service and support desk. And um, what was happening is um, uh, they they stated literally in this contract, if you start stalking again, we're gonna fire you because they knew this this past, and they were like, if you're able to stop, then we're fine with you. It, it sounds like it sounds like his reasons for start starting was that he never actually intended to stop. He just had to for his to get to get settled into his new job. Yes, definitely. And perhaps to basically try and clear his history for his weapons license. And when that stuff started falling through, yeah. then he had no reason not to start again. Exactly, and uh, because he changed all his info and actually moved places three times. Um, we couldn't directly track him because his phone numbers were dead, his old uh, email addresses were not, were not responding anymore. So we, we kind of had to get creative about that. Yeah. But if you already knew who uh, the name and you couldn't get, he, he wasn't dumb enough to provide this other information, the police report could have tracked where he was employed and everything else at that point. Well, he was stating it on his own LinkedIn. Oh, okay. <laughs> so in that case, he was literally saying, I'm working at the service and support desk. Yeah. And uh, the thing was, it matched all up because he was stating that on his LinkedIn. His manager actually told us he was, and he was using the work IP to send an email yeah. <laughs> through the contact form with a fake email. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case, yeah, it's kind of an idiotic way, but um, hadn't it been for um, him like not, not stalking her before and of course, we got the name the other way around by calling the phone number because he was stupid enough. It was an old subscription. And we even called Photophone and we said, hey, this is com co going on. Can you communicate with the police about this? And they were like, yeah, we don't see any reason. So then we had to get our own stuff done. And it turns out that he just kind of not really protected himself. Not a question there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, were you already involved with the initial um, tracking down of the um, the stalker and how did the person who was stalked get to you? Well, um, for the first question, I wasn't. I was contacted afterwards uh, by the victim 
And how did they get to me? They actually saw me giving a presentation somewhere else about uh, a forensic uh, analysis and how we uh, are able to track down people. And she was tipped off by a friend of hers that was like, maybe you should contact that guy. <laughs> <laughs> because the police, in, uh, she was actually in The Hague, the police was like, oh, we can't do anything. And they even suggested maybe it's someone different. Maybe you have made someone else like set up or something. <laughs> so instead of actually doing their job and looking into the information that we got, they just said maybe it was someone else. Yeah, doesn't look like the same guy. <laughs> nice. It's not been stalking for like one year before or something, you know? <laughs> Any other questions? Nope. Yeah. Misha. Yes. Uh, everything you do uh, is the same the police can do at exactly. the moment. Exactly. So, wh so why are there? So if no, I'm not going to bother you with that <laughs> question. But that's the, uh, the funny thing. The thing you do, they could do too. But I hear you say, they don't. we went to the police and they say, go away. So yeah, they, they basically said we don't. Okay. Uh, after you solved it, this case with this uh, girl and you went to the police, how did they react? Well, they, they were like, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, we are a bit stunned. We, we don't know what to say. And I was like, no, of course. I mean, um, I did this in, 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 in a total of like, I think, two days. And they took three months to even find him. And I also looked into the old evidence because I got that from the victim. And from what I saw, it was just all open information too. But they kind of didn't care. Well, even if they did. Even, uh, yeah, watch out, you got a box in your head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they kind of were like, uh, um, yeah, we, we can't solve this because we don't either don't have the capacity for it or, um, we literally don't care because you're not important enough. Mm. Yeah. So that was some, that's something that I, I see more. I also am currently involved in another case. And uh, instead of taking action, they're just like, no, 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 you, 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 you provide the evidence and, and we will see what we do with it. And even if we don't, we're going to tell you we do. <laughs> and then that's one thing that I think um, also is, is it, yeah, it can also use some upgrades. And, and actually, most of the cases that I see people that stalk aren't that smart. They usually have a lot of time. <laughs> and I think this guy certainly has now because he doesn't have a job anymore. <laughs> And a weapons license. I also was like, when I heard that, and also we didn't know that he had a weapons license before. <laughs> yeah, but that, that was, luckily, when you're convicted of stalking, you can't get a weapons license anymore. Because <laughs> there was also a question going on in my head. Can I, can you actually get a weapons license if he's like stopped for two years or something? You already have a weapon illegally. It doesn't matter if you don't have a license. Exactly. <laughs> but this was the thing. He actually bought a weapon. He needed to sell it to someone licensed because he didn't have a license anymore. So it was probably not only that he couldn't get a license, but that he needed to do something. And the only thing that he had to justify that was because he was convicted. But did he get some uh, help? Do you know about yeah. that? Oh, oh. One second. One second. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know, did he get some um, help, professional help? Because talking is a kind of sickness and, and uh, everything. Uh, yeah, he sounds nice. Yeah, he, he actually, he was actually walking with a psychiatrist. So he, he actually got uh, already, when, he, when the, the, the last conviction, uh, conviction happened, he actually already got help. And within that, like before that, he already had trouble. We heard from the past that he had trouble at home. And he actually, even with all that mental history, and even with everything being documented, he still got a weapons license. Wow. So I was also questioning the, the police, how is it possible that someone with a mental <laughs> illness who is stalking someone else is able to have a weapons license, let it be that it couldn't be renewed, of course, but how is it able that he got him in the first place? And they I were, asked myself that too. Yeah, and they were like, we don't know, we didn't see anything. We don't communicate with other instances for this. 
Oh. I was well because by the police. He was he was not yeah he was not a police but they they don't communicate they they uh, like psychological reports um, are not with the police. So in this case, I suggest that, I, or I suspect that they didn't even know about this mental history. They only knew that he was convicted of stalking. Uh, yeah, a question. Uh -oh. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear a nice challenge over here because next year, I guess there will be a hacker hotel again. Yeah. And I think someone in this room will have a talk about how he got his license permit in the Netherlands with a, a, a mental history. warning around oh. everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anyone up here. Nice. <laughs> yeah, with a Lichtbild Ausweis, that's a good one. We should try that. And also open carry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions about this topic or about uh, the case itself? Nope. No? Oh. Oh. Silent audience. <laughs> All right. Um, but I can oh. throw it. Hello? I have to throw it. Oh, you're gonna re throw, you can throw it back, or yeah, or you can on ask the questions. bottom of the presentation, I see this um, result from um, uh, when you um, test DNA, you put it on a gel. So I was kind of thrown off in the beginning. Was there actually anything happening with DNA in this entire research? No. Oh, no. Bummer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wanneer komt uh, de crypto? Nee, hoe heet dat ding nou? The kitties. Wanneer komt u naar de Firefox Store? Oh, when the crypto kitty, when the cyber kitten comes to the Firefox Store. Well, we're busy with that at the moment. Nice. Um, we probably will be released next week. Nice. <laughs> and then you can also have kittens instead of cyber on your Firefox and Opera browser. <laughs> all right. Well, then I want to take it to an end. And I want to thank you very much for all your attention and your questions. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>